got a couple of stories I could tell you about that. But you don't? No. Come on. Hey, it's from the old days, man. From the old days. When, when she showed up here, she was a rep for a paint company out of California. And Custer County Board of County Commissioners meeting will come to order. Uh, let the record show that today is July the 8th, 2020. The time is 9 o'clock a.m. I would ask if Ms. Kara would mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance today. So is it I pledge allegiance or is it I pledge allegiance? I, I just I don't pledge, know. I pledge allegiance. It's I? It's I not I? Uh, oh. I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't get the, I didn't get what you were saying. Uh, ah, ah, pledge allegiance. Like okay. That's why I thought I could shoot my mouth off and not have to suffer for it. So while we're doing that, uh, Madam Clerk to the board, would you please call the roll? <laughs> Commissioner Flower. Present. Commissioner Kanda. Here. Commissioner Prince. Here. Attorney Clint Smith. Present. And Clerk to the Board Kelly Camper. Present. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. We're getting the phones fired up here for teleconference, so we'll give folks just a minute to get called in. Uh, Vernon or Alex, are you on? <coughs> yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Well, thank you. Good. Good. I think we are fired up and running. Do you have a record of the number of people on the call? At present, we have four, excluding myself and the uh, commissioner room itself. Okay, good. So we'll move ahead with audience introductions if you've called in. Uh, well, let's go through introductions here in the room so everybody knows who's in the commissioner room. So, Kara. Thank you. Uh, so introduce yourself if you're on the phone, please. In London, High Altitude Garden Club. Thank you. Elaine Chaffinon, High Altitude Garden Club. Thank you. Deb Adams, Custer County Tourism. All right, thank you. Should have one more. All right, we'll move on. Thank you. Good morning. And welcome. Say, say again. Deb Adams, Cutter County Tourism. Yes. Barbara Mullen, High Altitude Garden Club. Can you say your name again, please? Robert Mullins. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would ask you to mute your phones. Go ahead. Our public health. And I would ask that you mute your phones uh, until we get to public comment or the agenda item that you may be on the call about. Thank you. Okay, and seconded to strike the second agenda item under new business, consideration of signing the school resource officer IGA. Discussion. Yeah, I talked to Kelly this morning. She says, well, you know, I thought that was on an agenda, and I don't know. I just didn't 
look ahead. So we dealt with it during uh, commissioner items yesterday, and not knowing. Uh, I. I'm sure there's going to be exceptions, but I'm not real comfortable for us voting on things during commissioner items uh, unless it's in kind of in the case of emergency. I don't know how you gentlemen feel about that, but uh, okay, we should be posting notice and the sunshine law comes into effect and so on and so forth. So anyway, it really doesn't have anything to do with this, so we'll move on. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of striking the second item under new business, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, give me just a second here. Do we have somebody else join us? Okay. Uh, and then... Kelly, I guess a question for you. Let me. So we had moved the garden club from yesterday to today. Right. I do not see it on here. It's on mine. It's on. It's on oh, mine. Oh, you know what? Sorry. You threw the wrong one away. Yeah. You threw the wrong one away, I'll bet. It uh, is the third one down. Yeah, well, the sec is it? Yeah, third yeah, one down. Third, yeah. Okay, so I'll. corrected here. Yeah, I had my agenda that I'd printed out yesterday and you gave me one when you know, threw the wrong one away. And no minutes to approve, so we will move on. Commissioner items, uh, Commissioner Kanda, would you like to begin? Uh, not a lot other than a few phone calls since yesterday. Uh, it's only been like 10 hours. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I'll yield the floor. Great. Right. Commissioner Prince? Thank you, sir. Um, <coughs> I attended the uh, um, recovery team meeting that we had yesterday afternoon. And I'd like to bring up under Commissioner Items, uh, we have the mid-month meeting scheduled in Wetmore. And considering um, the coronavirus and the restrictions, um, we're doing our meetings live stream and on phone. And I think that would create a significant hardship to try and recreate that down at Wetmore. So while I really respect the folks down there and want them to be party to our meetings um, I would recommend that we <coughs> suspend meetings outside of the commissioner room for anybody that will include the airport or San Isabel until such time as we feel the safety of the citizens would not be compromised by moving around and having a room full of folks so um, you're adding that we already said we're not going to do wet more this month, but you're making it broader. Right? I'm thinking we should make it broader, and we ought to stay with this format that we have now until such time as we can have folks be here so that we can use the phone systems and we can use the live streaming and we have the microphone set up in this room. Um, it just seems to make sense to me that we can get the most people involved, the method we're doing it now, as opposed to moving the meetings around. Okay. Uh, what's the group's pleasure? You want to vote on this? You want to do it by consent? Consent's fine okay. with me. So if there are no it. objections, then it's the consent of the board that we will continue the format of our meetings, uh, which is the commissioners, clerk, assistant, and the attorney attend the meetings live 
and we will continue to live stream those meetings and uh, teleconference the meetings. Any, we could wear a mask anywhere, so it really has to do with social distancing, don't social you think? Distancing. Until the commissioner determines social distancing is no longer necessary. So let the record reflect that. Okay, let me comment too on that because it brings up a good point. Uh, you mentioned social distancing. We could wear the masks and we could go into more volume or more people anywhere. We, that came up yesterday, uh, a discussion on how would we do better in a bigger room and we can have the meeting a bit. And so I don't want to talk about it today, but it might be an agenda item we ought to consider maybe next meeting or the meeting after that just to, to, to open up our ability to get more people to participate because this is a lousy connection. I, I would concur with you, Bill, if we can find a venue that would be safe and meet the requirements coming down from the state for distancing. Or our, our own requirements that might be stiffer, whatever we do. Correct. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Anything uh, else, sir, under commission report? I have nothing else, okay. sir. Uh, so I wanted, I've got a few things. I want to read a letter that was sent to us. Uh, dated June 26th. I got it yesterday. Uh, and it is from the West Custer County Hospital District. Dear Custer County BOCC, in response to your letter on May 20th, we look forward to meeting with you in a workshop format. We have received an adequate number of responses from the East Custer County survey and are eager to share the results with you and consider next steps to be taken. Please let us know a couple of dates and locations that would be convenient for you. Sincerely, Bob Tobin, uh, West Custer County Hospital District Board Chair. So I think uh, we should pick a couple of dates and locations that would work for us, and, and I will uh, convey that back to Bob. Mr. Chairman, I would recommend that um, maybe after the July 15th BOCC meeting, we have the workshop at maybe 1 o'clock on the 15th of July. Um, okay. um, I know there was some talk at one time about us having this workshop in Wetmore. Uh, I don't know if we want to do an afternoon meeting, if we want to do it down there, or should we just meet with the clinic up here and and then if we meet again with all the folks in Wetmore. My, my recommendation would be, I, th I think the folks in Wetmore, you would have much more um, opportunity to be part of the discussion, part of the workshop, if we did it here with the phones and the video, because we'd have to limit the amount of people in the room in Wetmore, and I would hate to exclude any individuals, but if we did it by phone, Everybody could be on it who chose to be on it. So I feel more comfortable here. I think we've more people. Uh, folks on the phone, could you mute your phones, please? M mute them means mute them, not si uh, lower the volume. Thank you. Um, yeah, and to Commissioner Canna's point, you know, I guess we wouldn't have to have it right here. I think that's why they said a location if we feel like we need to have them somewhere else. We so could yeah. uh, we could consider that. Uh, it, you know, we could have it in the school gym or at the saddle club or bigger buildings with get, allowing more people. Um, and I think we had the phone set up. Uh, the phone set, did the phone work in Wetmore? I thought it did. But that's too uh, small a room. Yeah, I, I don't think... The saddle club would be an alternative because I think the fair is going to have activities up in the saddle club building on that day. I wouldn't mind meeting over in the multipurpose room at the school. Yeah, that'd be good. Or, or, or even the old gym. Uh, Kelly, you have thoughts about that? Yeah, it depends. If the entire board shows up, I'm not sure it would be big enough, but it might. Yeah, we could sit in the bleachers. It would be a little easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Vernon, are you on? Yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, we're discussing maybe having a workshop the mid-month. Uh, 
and we're talking about the possibility of having it somewhere else and then still being able to live stream or have teleconference capabilities. Uh, any input we, on the whole tele or the live stream thing? Well, live stream would be kind of difficult to move the, the, the camera system, but we could do that given enough uh, advance notice and the setup time to make certain everything functioned right. Um, the teleconferencing is fairly versatile as long as we have a working phone line or a cell phone with good reception. Okay. Hey, uh, I don't think we need to have live stream if we've got this. It's easier to get um, uh, phone service to everybody right. you're clearly here. This live right. stream doesn't necessarily yeah. come across very clear either. I was going to say it's a workshop, so they're That's not right. live streaming. Don't need live stream. So maybe my question to Vern was a moot point. And no, if, we can we can do the we can do the workshop with a uh, with a um, conference call pretty easily. Okay. If that's what you guys would like. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. And then the other thought is typically in a workshop format, there's not a ton of interaction with the public. It's a workshop for us. So yeah, I but think maybe if the that. courtroom is available, I would support that. Try it. Okay. Dates. Are you good with the 15th? After the uh, commissioner's meeting, yeah, that'd be easy. Yeah, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's my uh, birthday. I move we uh, move it to the 16th. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It is my birthday. What is? The 15th. So uh, I Maybe want a cake should, in between the two meetings. We should celebrate. Interesting birthdays. The 16th is a court date, and the 13th. Right. We don't need to do uh, it. 15th's fine. Kara, would you mind asking the court clerk if the 15th would be available in the afternoon sure. on Wednesday the 15th? Sure. Thank you. Uh, alternate date, gentlemen? 17th. Uh, yeah, we have a 911 meeting on the 1 o'clock on Thursday, uh, the 17th. Probably not going to be a good day. We're right in the middle of the fair and rodeo. Yeah, that's exactly the rodeo weekend. So, uh, Monday's out. Monday's, uh, we can have it later. You know, what about the 20th? 20th? We have a CES meeting on Tuesday, so second alternate date, Monday the 20th. That'd be fine. I'm fine with that. Okay, what time does that start? We should be done if you want to do back to back. All you do is make a deadline and meet it. Yes, starting at one. Yes, that's correct. One o'clock. Um, so Miss Karras said that uh, the court clerk okayed the use of the courtroom on the fifteenth at one o'clock for a clinic workshop. Uh, if it's all right, gentlemen, I will reach out to Mr. Tobin and I'll give him both of those dates with the preference on the 15th. Is that all right? Uh, 20th. And I would assume probably the courtroom would be available on the 20th too, but uh, I would guess maybe we can make that 15th work. So if we have to go back and see about the court availability, courtroom availability on the 20th. We'll follow up with that. Uh, thank you. So the other thing I wanted to bring up, gentlemen, was John Evert called me last week. As you may recall, he was the person who eradicated the prairie dogs on our Justice Center property. And they are going to do another eradication east across the road on that property where they're going to build a new subdivision. Sorry. Yeah. Housing. I don't know if subdivision is the correct term. When? So he wanted to know if we'd be interested in him reapplying his eradication process to the Justice Center land. He said it wouldn't be near as expensive. He said, I think last time it was almost $3,000. He estimated this year or this go round, it would probably be a thousand bucks. When? When would he do it? Yeah. What? They're scheduled soon to do the property across the road. 
I, I'm so, the reason I'm asking is just for time's sake. Does this need to be voted on? If we do, we'll put it on the agenda next time. No, it's under a five thousand dollars. Well, Might yeah, I think we should vote on it eventually. But uh, I just need to let him know if we're interested or not. And if so, then I would ask yeah. him to submit a formal bid. I'd Go ahead, Jay. Thank you, sir. Um, I I don't see the necessity for it. I mean, it's not like the prairie dogs are interfering with any of the county operations or business that I'm aware of um, at, at this time. I mean, when we start working closer right. with it, I agree with you, Bill. Um, so I, I'm not sure we really need to spend a thousand dollars to eradicate a pest. That's not a pest at this point. Okay. Uh, if they were not going to treat on the east side, then I would be all in favor of it because we know what would happen the minute they start moving equipment in there and digging. What are those prairie dogs going to do? They're going to go west Green grass somewhere else. and park on our place so but he indicated to me there wasn't a lot of prairie dogs on that justice center land uh i think if they eradicate them on the west side i have a tendency to agree i don't think they're a huge issue um but i told him i would bring it before the board so what would you like me to do i think we can just Forget it. Wait. <laughs> Wait. I, I'm not in favor of okay. spending the money. All right. That's fine. Uh, by consent, then, gentlemen, if it's all right, I will convey that message to him. Thank you. Okay. That's uh, all I had. I had a couple phone calls last night as well. Uh, I don't know that it's worth going in. I'm not sure. So I think we'll just wait and see. There was some concern about an activity. Uh, I guess I can bring it up because it was actually, I think, addressed to us as well about allowing an activity uh, at Three Peaks Ranch this weekend. And uh, I spoke with Jackie and Vic Barnes about that. Um, I don't know that we even have the authority to do that. We haven't signed a special use permit to begin with. Well, I thought we left it with. That's an issue for the planning or the zoning issue. I let them handle that, and that's why we said to give it to Jackie. All I, all I got from Jackie was, here's an FYI. Let them deal with it, and let's see what comes back. Uh, we, we don't need to worry about it right now, I don't think. I agree. I mean, I, 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 I think we ought to let the planning committee to decide how they want to handle it. We given them the responsibility, let's give them the authority right, to make that decision. Yeah, I agree, and I think even more to the point, I think that's their director's job. They're probably not going to meet to make those kind of decisions. I think that's on it's Jackie's whatever table, mild. but um, we'll see. So I just didn't, I told them both. I didn't feel that was a commissioner thing at this point. So I agree. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, that's all I had. Uh, anything else, gentlemen, under Commissioner Ivers? Not for me. Okay. No, sir. All right, we'll move on. Uh, I have nothing to report for Upper Arc other than obviously the meeting is this Thursday at 1 o'clock. So, uh, and you're doing those virtually, right? That's what I understand. Uh, I am, yes. Uh, as are some board members. There are some board members live. And I probably should throw this out because it got – maybe I said this. I don't remember. It got to be a little point of – of contention in the last oh we're getting a mic for the phone well, he stole it. Uh, uh, counselor and nobody could hear it uh, that's right nobody could hear it anyway um, no no don't do it now you keep it we got another yeah. one up here. So I bring this up just because it did kind of become a point of contention and discussion at the at the last Upper Arc meeting. Um, the Conservancy District hired a new secretary. And so it was interesting to sit there because they were introducing her and a lot of these board members were kind of had this. When did that oh, happen? Look. When did that happen? Well, it happened. Whatever Terry Skanga is, I forget his formal title. It happened 
to be his daughter. And so right away, man, the director started saying, hey, they weren't going to make a big deal about her. But when the director said, I believe we need to, got over these mics, uh, I believe we need to take a large, hard, hard, long look at our hiring policy. Apparently, this all happened behind closed doors, and the directors didn't know anything about it, and they weren't very happy. But so anyway, uh, Terry's daughter is now the uh, board secretary. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, they got into a heated discussion about that. Okay, um, so we'll move on. I wonder if the attorney has anything to report today. He, he does have a microphone. <laughs> okay, you you don't have to turn your mic on, but if you want to have your turn voice on, amplified. Turn it, on, turn, it on again. <laughs> turn it on again, Clint. <laughs> oh, was it on? Okay. And normally we don't stand during our report, but if you choose to do that, sir, it is entirely your walking out. <laughs> Oh, so she's interrupting the. I'm talking to her right here and listening to All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, appreciate that. Oh, gosh. I got to figure out where we're at on. Oh. I've been waiting now I know. for the next item. Well, so we have a little issue. I've apparently been going a little overboard with asking our administrative assistant if she has anything to bring before the board. She never said this to me, by the way. Uh, maybe you could just say, is there anything from the administrative assistant and let it go at that. It's not my nature. So before I ask if there's anything from the administrative assistant, I would just like to inform you, the board, the county, pretty much the United States of America that today is Kara's birthday. So I don't think we're going to sing happy birthday, but certainly we can wish her a happy birthday, can't we? Well, I just, because you don't spend as much time around her as I do, and she can get hateful. I'm going to pay for this as it is. Happy birthday. Saying it would be over the top. Yeah, happy, so happy birthday, birthday Kara. kiddo. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate that. Uh, that being said, uh, the next item on the business agenda is the administrative item, assistant items. Ms. Kara, anything? <laughs> you are entirely welcome. We're going to live stream the rest of the day so that there's a record of what happens uh, in retaliation for that. Okay, public comment. If you uh, are on the phone and you want to comment on anything that's not on the agenda that will be considered later, now would be the appropriate time to do that. Staff reports. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If uh, there's no public comments, we'll move on to staff reports. First staff report is the airport uh, running a little behind according to our estimated times. Kara, I can't see around the corner. Is anybody out there? The airport guy's out there. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move on. Let's see if he's on board. He maybe they called in. I heard a phone. Is there anybody from the airport on the phone? Okay. So we'll move on. Office of Emergency Management. Uh, Ms. Meredith? Good morning. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We're, well, we're actually, we're right on time for yours, huh? Six feet away. We're 15 feet apart from, or 15 minutes late for airport, but we're right on time for your staff report, so. Hold that. All right, good. Well, welcome. Good morning. Before, I realize I didn't give my timesheet to be signed. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Does it matter which one we signed? There's not an original. It doesn't matter which one of these we sign. I have one that I sign. I think they have that. Oh, okay. I sign that, right. but either one. 
this one you can find. So we'll just take a second here. And, uh, May I make a comment? S certainly, go ahead, sir. I, 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 I'm so sorry you're leaving us, but I want you to know how proud I am, and I think the whole county is, of this phenomenal promotion you got. I think it's well deserved. And while it's it's not the best thing for the county, it's wonderful for the state and it's wonderful for you. So I just want to say congratulations. Okay, I would move we approve the timesheet for 210 hours for the. I'll meeting. second it. We're moving and seconded to approve the timesheet discussion. I think there's 20 minutes on here that you, fudging. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll uh We'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 210, yes, ma'am. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else, kiddo? Oh, wow. That's good. Sweet. Yeah. So she has really good project management. Good. So yeah. Okay. She's doing that, which is really awesome. Yeah, um, that's amazing. Yeah, so we don't have to have that. So I'll finish that. Um, I finished the future report for the NTG grant. Um, yes. So because that's going to be due, the timeline go on. So I'm getting it ready now. Oh. I already have the um, receipt that's about Yeah, the narrative is done, right? Yeah. yeah. And we signed that. Gotcha. So there's that lag, and so I'm still sending my report, even though we don't have the official documents yet, and then it'll be retroactively reimbursed right. to the budget. Okay. Um, and so I'll have it. Um, it's based on what was everything was accomplished. So when is it due to sign? The what? tenth, and then um, the um, claims, which is the um, budget side of it. So I'll have it done before. Yeah, I spoke to Christy Coleman, if I may, last night, and we talked about that, that, that both the narrative and the financial, the fiscal side, is two different documents that are going to need to be signed. She was confident that you would be able to get those to us. Uh, and she said the other thing, I'll just throw this out real quick, that she said, believe me, I will help you so that you guys don't miss any deadlines after the 16th. Uh, that's... That's not an issue. Most of that comes across my desk. I will make sure that we're on good solid ground with that. But she said, yeah, you need to be aware there's two documents, the narrative and the financial piece. So thank you for that. Yeah, okay. um, I put in the reimbursement for the Homeland Security Grant. The 2017 grant was still open uh, for some good funding for the posse. And so some cones, flares, um, a new projector, for that projector was all within that grant. So um, it was in 2017 that we had to close out before, or that money was going away. So um, I sent in the reimbursement yesterday to make sure it was closed because it had to be sent in before the end of July or the money would go completely away. So got that squared away. Good. Um, so I've ga been gathering the COVID-19 expenses that each county department has been filing. I have an Excel sheet already tracking those expenses. Tom and I, I think Jay, you were on the YouTube, you kind of briefly brought it up in the economic support chat meeting yesterday, but I wasn't sure if you want me to send that to you um, in general. 
Yeah, I would guess, probably. But to, to who? Sorry. But that, so after I leave on 16th, he's going to make changes. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say, why don't you send it to the chairman and, okay. and then we'll, Karen and I will sure. archive that at least and I'll share it with the. Okay, I can do that. Um, why don't you send it to me too, because that, that's my area. So send me what you got. I want to talk to Christy as well. Okay. So that would be good. Um, upcoming, I've been doing the program uh, support for the next director so that they know where things have left off and what to really prioritize in the start of um, working with other project, uh, departments to make sure that nothing falls through cracks and some things are together. Um, been working, for example, one of those things is the Everbridge system. So Alex Anderson and I are the ones that can do a public notification to the other ones of an emergency. And I want to make sure there's a, a second at least for him. He's not the only one with that. So we're working with Shane and um, trying to find a couple of different people within the county that would be good to, uh, to do that. And then that's really it. Um, I had a quick question. They, we, they tuned our radios the other day, and my radio is over there still somewhere. I think okay. it's and they said they can't. Right there. Oh, you got it there. And they can't, uh, and, then they're, and they're obsolete, apparently. Yeah, the 3,000. So what do we, what's the next step? Um, and when? There's going to be another uh, purchasing of the radios um, if we can go down that road. And how many of them are? Just the three of us that have the, the old ones, or is there more? I think I, I had one of the 3,000. Public health. So we got to round up, we'll see how many we got, and yeah. do that as a part of the budget next year, probably. Okay. Uh, anything else for us, ma'am? <coughs> Uh, any update on the number of people tested yesterday? Um, I believe we had 40, at least 40 people tested yesterday. Um, that included um, the Ace Hardware agreed to have uh, all their staff tested, which is awesome, um, and then a few others. How long does it take to do the test over there? Um, it's had, the test itself doesn't take very long. Like five minutes or something? Yeah. And it is free. I'm just yeah, stating that free. so everybody understands what's going yeah, on. We, we put that in all of our messaging. That, yep. it's, that it's a free test. And that was a good release, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, I just want to publicly say while we're on the topic, I'm very proud of Valley Ace Hardware and how they've handled their exposure out there. I commend uh, Paul Winky and Jeremy Handy as their managers, just doing a great job with that. So. So we've really almost doubled our test cases uh, over time. We were at 43, I think, before that, 42. Yeah. And if they tested 40 yesterday, I mean, that's pretty intense. So Any uh, results other than no, negative? It's going to take about 72 hours yeah. to get those results. Um, part of that is, you know, we were trying to look forward and get things prepared for um, increase of testing capabilities and from the activities that happened this weekend, or last weekend, and trying to ramp up what um, we're capable of doing. And so looking at regional partners, or if that doesn't work, we go to the state for um, that. We're going to order more tests and more PPE and be prepared for that so that we're not Okay. All right. Uh, obviously, you have submitted a letter of resignation formally to the commissioners. We've received that. Uh, what is the group's pleasure? Let's deal with that while we're here. We've got to get a notice on the street as soon as possible. It, it's, you're gone the uh, next week, right? On 16th, 
Yeah. That's. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yep. Uh, well, I would move that we reluctantly accept Meredith Nichols' letter of resignation. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and seconded to accept the letter of resignation from Meredith Nichols, Office of Emergency Management Manager. Discussion? Yeah, I, you know, I just echo what Commissioner Prince said. Uh, I'm proud of you for the opportunity that's been placed in front of you and uh, certainly will miss you. Uh, appreciate the job that you've done, but um, I'm sure that this will be a great move career-wise for you, and um, I'm excited about your prospects in the future. I spoke with Christy about that some last night. She's very excited as well. And I will just say, um, Christy indicated there were 86 applicants for that position. Uh, so very proud of Meredith to, to come out at the top of that heap. I think that speaks volumes to your uh, education and your experience and your personality. So congratulations on that. Yeah, not like that. And I told her that when she called the Congratulations on the, the big step. Where will you be, Colorado? I will actually do work from home and then travel. So I will, I'll still be here for at least uh, nine months or so and kind of still, still where I'm traveling for. Go from there. Good. So another conversation I had with Christy, and I want to bring it up here because it involves you. Um, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but will you... Uh, work on a vacancy announcement. We can talk about that later, but Christy uh, said she would be more than happy to assist too. So. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I, I, there's a lot of avenues that we can send it to. Yeah, and that's Colorado, so. good. We put it far and right. Okay. Further discussion? Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of accepting letter of resignation, say aye. 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 Mo Opposed nay, motion carries. Uh, your letter has been officially accepted and uh, go with God's grace, my girl. Thank you guys. Thank you Welcome. It's been a great couple of years. Good. Well, we're proud of you very much. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Okay, next staff report, public health. Uh, Yeah. Yes, it needs to be in the Board of Health. Yeah, I mean, that just historically has been one of the staff reports she's reported to us since I've been on the board, so I think it was just an oversight that it was left on there. So, um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. We just transfer that over to Board of Health. Technically, it's on the agenda. We kind of missed that for amending the agenda. Yeah, we should have done it. By consent, gentlemen, are you all right with moving that to Board of Health? Correct. That's yes. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, spoke to the treasurer. She does not have a report. They're still waiting, or were as of yesterday. Kelly's still waiting on a final document. Did you so skip finance on purpose? No, not on purpose. I didn't. <laughs> I thought maybe Donna's no. in the hall here. Yeah, and we just I've did. got three lines of notes here under it and uh, blew right by it. Good morning. How are you? So human resource finance report. Um, yeah, so we've got, a, I know one of the big things is this ton of handwritten's. Um, gentlemen, I believe you've had a chance to look those over, but uh, we'll deal with it whenever we get to it. So the floor is yours, Ms. Donna.
Okay. Yeah, that's the last thing on our agenda today to look at the posting for OEM. Okay. So the handwritten uh, this month, I, I bring it up because it's a little unusual, told $180,792.81. One eighty seven ninety two eighty one, <clears throat> and the reason for the unusually large amount of handwritten checks, uh, we had one hundred and thirty thousand nine hundred dollars for lease purchases for road and bridge water trucks. I, I don't know how many vehicles the sheriff's lease purchase was. It was seventeen thousand? Fourteen. Eight, Fourteen. Okay. Two. Okay. I just didn't look. And then uh, 16,000 and some change on the water line project. So normally those handwritten run 30, 40, 50,000, but this year or this month they're 180, so I thought I'd just throw that out. Also, it was nice to see the 2,000 and some dollars times 13 for the kids council. They gave out their 25,500. Uh, I think that was for a food uh, I forget the name of that. Yeah, to get their money right away. Yeah, so I appreciate you doing that, Donna. That was great. So, uh, <coughs> so do we need a motion, Kara? Would you kind of? Uh, do we need a motion for approving the handwritten? I move we approve the handwritten vouchers that uh, Donna brought. I'll second it. It has been moved and seconded to approve the handwritten. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Those have been approved. Okay. First opportunity would be this, not Thursday, a week after Thursday. Yeah. Actually, I, you cut off. I checked with the Tribune, and if we get it in before noon, you can. On Wednesdays, you can do that. A press release, especially, is possible. You got a couple hours. And I'll call them back. Okay, well, if you'll leave those with us, uh, hopefully. We, do you want to come back when we get to that? on the agenda or you can give me a message or yeah okay. whichever way um it's not been that long that okay. it's filled so i don't know what changes um you know if the hour salary exempt you know those are all things i think the job descriptions uh strong okay. that's what we used before yes uh okay I'll just make a note here, and we may holler at you if you're available to come back over. Uh, if not, if we have questions or something, we can forward those to you. Okay, anything else? Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thanks for all your work over there. Thanks, Don. So as uh, I started indicating earlier, the treasurer's report was hung up for some uh, for a report that they had not received yet. So she said she would forward that to us when that was done. So we do not have a uh, treasurer's report today. And uh, Jackie Hobby, Planning and Zoning, I believe she sent a request to all of us uh, asking if we could postpone her report until July 15th because she wanted to include the latest Planning and Zoning report uh, from their meeting yesterday so i said i don't see a problem with that so uh, well, with, fine with that we will move on uh, any unfinished <laughs> any unfinished business gentlemen not to me sir okay we'll move on to new business. somebody's not muted out there They're clearing your throat just to know who you are yeah uh, we'd ask that you mute your phones if you can, please. <coughs> so under new business, uh, first item is consideration of approval of the tourism board logo. Uh, I believe, gentlemen, you should have that in your board packet. 
So, yes, Commissioner. Well, just to open the discussion, I'll move that we accept the Tourism Board logo. Um, uh, I'm looking at it. It says Wet Mountain Valley. I'll say. Moving and seconded to accept the Tourism Board's logo discussion. Commissioners? Check, check. No, I, I, I looked at it. We got it sent to us several weeks ago, and uh, they had brought this up before. I, I, I don't know. That we've got two copies, one's with a dark sky and the other's with a lighter sky. So are, we, are we debating that no. change? No. May, may I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Oops. Well, wait a minute. We, we no. haven't, uh, we're, we're, we haven't decided yeah, that. <laughs> We haven't voted yet. We haven't got it officially. We'll get to public comment here in just a second. Thank you. Uh, so, Commissioner Prince, you've been, kind of been involved in attending these tours. Yeah, I have, sir. I, I just want to bring up the speed on where we are. Um, this has been a, an extended process. Um, I have sat through most of the discussions, of course, not being a party to any voting or anything, because that's not my role. Um, I think the Tourism Board did an, uh, an outstanding job. They were presented with multiple um, original versions of a logo. Uh, the board rejected it because it, they didn't feel it really reflected uh, Custer County. The question came up whether Wet Mountain Valley really is Custer County and should it say Custer County. Um, the board, and I'll let Ms. Adams talk about that in just a minute, but I believe the board, if I remember correctly, said we're really known as the Wet Mountain Valley, and um, <coughs> part of Custer County is the Wet Mountain Valley, so um, I, I'd never objected when they were doing the Wet Mountain Valley part of that and said I think that's wrong. Um, overall, I think they handled their business extremely well, and I'm uh, very appreciative of what they did, and I, I like the logo when the final uh, voted on version. No, it's not. I'm sure I think the information did. Did this copyright this? I believe any original work, whether you actually copyright it or not, is automatically copyrighted. Um, so it is copyrighted automatically since it's an original work. Original work by this works or? It's a tourism board. They just paid for VistaWorks to do this. That's right. Okay. Yeah, tourism okay. board owns it. Any further discussion, Jim? Public comment. Go ahead, Ms. Adams. I also sent you a style guide. So Bill mentioned that one particular logo was sent and then another one. In the style guide are all the variations of the logo, uh, black and white, color, saying Wet Mountain Valley, saying WMV. So that style guide is what we will go, go forward with that depending upon the way we use the logo will determine what version we use. Um, when we make stickers, are we going to go with color or black and white? So we are not stuck with one very specific logo, but we have different things to work with. And I just want to bring to your attention as far as the design, uh, the reason uh, we didn't go with Custer County is because there were six Custer counties in the United States. And as, uh, as was mentioned in the presentation that was sent to you, no one travels to go to a particular county. The reason the Wet Mountain Valley stands out is because it's, it's an actual place. And even though it says, well, Wet Mountain Valley, the Tourism Board will, of course, promote everything in the valley, including San Isabel Lake. But as far as our brand, the Wet Mountain Valley is what we would like to become known for. Also, the mountains that are in the logo, there are many, many logos with mountains and stars. Very prolific in Colorado. So we want it to make ours stand out a little bit. Those mountains that are in the logo are Rito Alto, 
and Spread Eagle. And then the reason for the shooting star was that no other logo has a shooting star. And the specialness of the shooting star is that whenever anyone sees one, whether you're a child or whether you're a grown-up, no matter your political affiliation, your religious affiliation, everyone gets excited about a shooting star. And so we wanted that excitement in the logo. And it really did go back and forth a lot to design something that all seven tourism board members would be proud to share with the community. And so this is, this is the final work that we came up with. And we are certainly hoping that the BOCC, as well as most of the community, will embrace this new brand that we want to have active for at least the next decade. Thank you. Other public comment? Other public comment? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving the logo, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Logo is being approved. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, gentlemen. Good job, Teresa. Good work. Thank you. Next item of business on the agenda, consideration of the letter of intent for the Rosita Broadband Tower site. Uh, we've been provided a copy of that letter of intent, gentlemen. Uh, Oops, pleasure. And Phones, please. Deb, I, Debbie, I think it's your uh, phone. Uh, approve and sign the letter of intent for the Rosita Broadband Tower site, uh, which is on county property. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to approve and sign the letter of intent on behalf of the county. Uh, in this case, it happens to be to the county for a broadband tower site on the uh, parcel described in the document, which is county-owned property basically on the northeast side uh, discussion yes sir go ahead uh, thank you mr chairman um this is as far as i'm aware i've been sitting through all the meeting on behalf of the county hey Vern. in this vernon yes sir somebody else logged in i've muted everybody now except for uh, except for you and me Okay, thank you. And then we'll have public comment here, but uh, I think it's appropriate. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I've sat through uh, most of the tower meetings, uh, understanding, of course, that the Rosita Tower location is the only one that's on county property. Um, I understand that we're very close to having all six tower locations um, under an agreement my only concern is I just want to verify and make sure that uh, the neighbors around the proposed tower site will have an opportunity to um, voice their concerns and discussions or approvals of the site on the county property. I know they're doing it on the others. I just want to make sure the county property is not going to be handled any differently than the yeah, others. Yes, great point. Uh, certainly it will go through the... Uh special use hearings at the rest of the properties will. That's a great point you brought yeah, up. Yeah, that's a very good point. It will go through the hearings. Thank you. Further discussion? Yeah, I guess I just want to... I know they're doing it on the notice. I just want to make sure the property is not going to be handled any differently. Yeah, that's a great point. Vernon, thank you, sir. Uh, so I just want to bring up for public knowledge that uh, there were some other sites that site selection consultants company looked at in Rosita. Uh, all of them had some drawbacks as we know. Um, this one has a drawback in my opinion. We're not going to get a lot of great cell or internet coverage going to the southwest because of the topography of that land. 
but I do believe this is probably the best option that's out there on the table right now. So it covered uh, the most um, population, even though some won't be covered. So they all had drawbacks. Yeah, the other thing that was kind of weird was in I looked to Clint uh, reading a contract uh, from the county to the county. <laughs> it didn't happen a lot, but. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just mention was, and I asked this to Evan Brooks, didn't he sent me another copy. Um, I'm not sure he understood my question. So on the annual rental, I didn't even know if that needed to be in here or not. Who are we going to provide in kind to? Uh, I don't have a problem with, the, with it being in there as it is, but I just thought, well, it really doesn't apply here. So uh, that was my thoughts there. Other discussion? concerning the uh, letter of intent. For those that are listening that may not know, all six of these towers are on 400 square feet of property. It's a 20 by 20 foot footprint for a single pole, a monopole uh, tower, no guy wires. Um, and so as Commissioner Prince alluded to, certainly the uh, adjoining landowners will be contacted about that. Other people may have something to say about it, but specifically uh, the law requires that the adjoining landowners be contacted and have an opportunity to express their opinions. So um, I, I just thought this was probably as good a option as you had out there, really. Um, those others their coverage was a lot less than what we'll get out of this uh, town. So, further discussion? Public comment, Vern? I'm unmuting everyone. Thank you. Is any public comment on the uh, agenda item of signing a letter of intent for the broadband tower site? Hearing none, we'll move on and we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving and signing the letter of intent uh, from the county to the county for the Rosita Broadband Tower site, say aye. 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 Motion opposed nay. Motion carried. I think, yeah, just a chair sign. So. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. Line muted. And then line unmuted. We will uh, probably need to send the. So you're going to need a copy of that. It's, it's this is a letter of intent. Okay. All right. Because there's other letter of intents out there, but they're not dealing with the county they're dealing with site selection consultants so so if we get a hard copy of that I'll sign it and then we can I'm guessing we can scan that and send it electronically to Evan Brooks and then we'll give a copy to Miss Kelly thank you uh, consideration of the Garden Club proposal is the next item of business gentlemen we've had their presentation at a prior meeting, they were unable to be there, so we moved it to today. Uh, so with that, I would turn the floor over to whoever is the spokesperson for the Garden Club. Uh, good morning. This is in London, and I represent the High Altitude Garden Club this morning. And I wanted to say briefly, uh, I wanted to clarify a few of the things that were in the proposal for you. Uh, we have a long history with the gardens on the courthouse property since we've been maintaining them since 1998. And I wanted to say at one time the garden areas along the walkways especially did have irrigation, but those existing walkway garden hoses are no longer functional or connected to any water source. The spring
sprinklers, which water the lawn areas, do not reach the garden areas. And this has resulted in hand watering without the location of accessible hose bids. And I know you addressed that earlier. But the single accessible hose bid to us is on the north end of the front facade of the building, which requires the person watering to cross both walkways and the entire length of the building to water any of the flowering garden areas. And this was the basis of our request for an accessible hose bib and hose. So far this season, our volunteers from the Garden Club have spent 85 hours in the gardens preparing them for this summer growing season, and the work in the gardens remains ongoing as at this time. The limited number of our membership volunteers prompted our proposal to convert the gardens adjacent to the front of the courthouse to minimal maintenance area rather than a flower garden. So we would like for the commission to consider the proposal that we sent to you for conversion of that area. We'd also like for the commissioners to consider reimbursement to the club for the yearly application of mulch to the garden areas which we find necessary for weed control and moisture retention. I, and I understand uh, from the previous meeting that the commissioners are in the process of obtaining bids for for an irrigation system, and I would like at this moment to urge them to follow through on this with consideration to the ongoing activity and involvement of the Garden Club. And if there's anything else that I can answer for you at this time, I'd be happy to do so. And I have some other members of the club that have more longevity with these gardens available for any questions you might have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. John. Uh, yeah, we'll have to speak up because she's turned the volume down and Kara just stepped out. So go ahead if you can speak louder. Okay. Um, I, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I, yes. Before we, before we actually move on your, your suggested um, approval by the commission, I just want to tell you on behalf of all of Custer County how much we appreciate the work that you, your organization, and all the folks involved have done not only at the not only at the county building but on Main Street. Um, y you folks have been just wonderful, and I just want to tell you for the entire county how much we appreciate the work that you've done. Well, thank you very much. We have a great deal of pride in our town, and we feel most of us very fortunate to live here and to be involved, and it's our way of giving back. And we especially are proud of the courthouse building and the gardens in front, and we would like to aid in any way we can to keep them looking as good as possible. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. Uh, Chair would suggest we deal with uh, this whole proposal in two separate areas. Uh, one, obviously, the financial. That's all right. Uh, I move that. I'm sorry. No, that's right. Go ahead. It's fine. I didn't mean to jump on you. Okay. You're going to take it separate in that case, suggest it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I will. Chair recognizes Commissioner Prince. Thank you, sir. Um, I move that we approve an additional $100 for the work that has been done to maintain the beauty of the courthouse, which certainly shows the work that's been done, to $300 in lieu of the 200 that is being uh, suggested by the Garden Club. Is there a second? Second. We moved and seconded to uh, pay the Garden Club $300 a year for their expenses for the uh, flower beds in front of the courthouse. Discussion? A good thing to do. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of what they've done and what they're going to do. So thank you for doing it, ladies. Yeah, we appreciate that very much. Public comment. Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the motion to pay $300 a year to offset costs for the Garden Club, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we will, uh, I'll ask Kara to submit a voucher uh, for $300. Um, is there a time of the year you'd prefer that money, I would assume, in the spring, but uh, defer to the Garden Club? Uh, yes, uh, the spring would be ideal, but uh, we 
are able to cover the costs until you uh, forward that money to us. So thank you very much for that. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, we'll, we'll generate that voucher uh, in our office for this year and would ask, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> would ask that you invoice the county uh, at a time of your choosing in the spring, and then we'll make sure that gets through the uh, process. Sounds like she's worked Thank with the government before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We can do that for yeah. you for that amount of money. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, I'm going to throw out a couple comments about the rest of the proposal, if I may, gentlemen, before we move on. Um, and and I guess I'll ask a question of the Garden Club as part of that. Uh, I did speak with Ivan, the maintenance person, and uh, he certainly is willing to take care of all of the areas uh, indicated on the map uh, with the exception of D, E, F, and G, and that's by direction of the Garden Club. They'd like to retain uh, maintenance and planting of that area. So he said he would be willing to take care of the rest of it and make sure that we did all the watering. So I talked to him about adding another zone or two to his sprinkling system, his above ground system. He said he could do that at a nominal cost and we'll make sure those flower beds get watered. Now that, that was the discussion. Um, I guess I want to ask the garden club, uh, given a choice, would you want to continue with Garden H, or would you like the county to just take care of that? Well, we would like the county to take care of A and B. We have already um, addressed the small area listed as Garden C. So I would be very happy to work with him, but I would urge that once your irrigation system has been installed if you choose to do so that you might create low maintenance types of shrubbery in those areas. Okay, my question was about area H as in Henry. We lost her. I'm sorry, did you say H? H, yes ma'am. Is an area for that we have a separate proposal for the commissioners at a time that irrigation might be available in that area. And it would be, again, a low-maintenance area that would involve the planting of uh, tree, a tree perhaps and some shrubbery and grasses that would not need the type of maintenance that the actual flowering gardens need. Yeah, uh, Ivan's final comment was to me, he said, if that's what the commissioners want to do, I'll take care of everything except D, E, F, and G. Uh, are you okay with that? We are for the, yes. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, we're, we're kind of in the process of determining the best route to go uh, with irrigation. Uh, so he just said, hey, if they want to do D, E, F, and G, I'll take care of the rest of it. So that was what he had said, and that's what I'm throwing out to the group, uh, to the commissioners. So uh, if that's okay, then with you guys, I don't, I don't want to introduce a motion that's in conflict with what the Garden Club wants to do, but uh, from the proposal that I read, I, I think we've gleaned it out that if you will continue to uh, plant and maintain areas D, E, F, and G, then our maintenance person will take care of the rest of it. And we will. Uh, Commissioner Kand is asking if you are going to take care of H or if the county was, and I thought you said that you'd prefer the county to do it and you'd be willing to assist with some planting recommendations. Well, that, that is correct, and it would depend on how you move forward with your irrigation. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. So with that being said, then I would move that we enter into an informal agreement with the Garden Club that they would maintain the areas adjacent to both sidewalks on the west side of the courthouse uh, and the flower beds and the uh, county will be responsible for the rest of the property. I'll second it. Moved and seconded uh, as aforementioned agreement with the Garden Club discussion. 
so I, my conversation with Ivan was that he will uh, make every effort to get D, E, F, and G watered. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion? Any other public comment? Yeah. Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of uh, the agreement with the Garden Club or D, E, F, and G areas of the uh, flower bed say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, ladies. I appreciate that. Elaine, I look forward to meeting you in person one of these days. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, thanks very much, and thanks all. Uh, t please convey our thanks to all of your folks that are volunteering to do that. We help the money. Hope the money helps a little bit. I know it's not a lot. If you find that you just desperately need more, come back and talk to us. Okay, we very much appreciate hear you hearing our case and our presentation, and thank you for that amount of money. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, thank you, folks. Let me get back to... Okay, moving on, the next item of business consideration of posting the job vacancy for the OEM. Um, obviously, Donna gave us uh, a draft to look at. Um, I've, I've got a recommendation I'd like to make to the commissioners. Uh, doesn't have to be on a real formal basis, I don't think, but I would like to send this packet to Christy Coleman. Uh, she said that she would help us make sure we get this distributed statewide to the appropriate um, entities. Uh, she said, you know, definitely, yeah, I just encourage the commissioners, she said, to not get blinders on and start looking at OEM from a COVID-19 perspective. She said that will be a disaster. She said, you, you definitely got to look at plan writing, grant writing, uh, obviously appropriate response to pandemics and certainly to the fire uh, issue as well. So I haven't read it. I think it's probably, you know, like Donna said, pretty much standard what we did last time, but I would sure like to shoot this to Christy and let her vet this if you don't mind. I got a couple comments for you, Tom. Okay, that, go ahead. That, good, good point. So there's two pieces. One is, we need to get it to Christy. There's no question about that. Right. And then it needs to be disseminated within the OEM realm. And there's lots of contacts, and she probably have other websites for us to do that with. That's, that's what, what she's going to do, do, I know. Yeah. And so that's the point. The other piece is we can update it as we do it, because right now uh, we need to get it posted as soon as we can. And so, and like we talked about earlier, uh, we can get it in the papers starting today if we hustle. If, uh, and it makes sense. This is a good write-up from the last time. I think it's okay from a paper point of view, and if we have to update it for Christy later, we can do that, or if she has some other comments for us. And then we need to get make sure it's on our website. And I've gotten some comments on our website not being too user-friendly, and we need to start uh, maybe to have a discussion with Vern and, and figure out a better way of doing that. But right now, it needs to be on that as well. So do you want to, do we want to just, you mentioned getting it to Christy right away. That's sort of an acclamation we could just agree to, right? Um, yeah, I, we don't I don't know that, that once we <clears throat> post it, then we can we can decide where we're going to disseminate it. Right. But, uh, so I think formally, yeah, a motion would be in order to post this vacancy notice, um, and then we can address it. Okay, so I move we post this vacancy notice at first opportunity. I second it. It's been moved and seconded to uh, post the vacancy notice for the Office of Emergency Management manager's position. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, I guess my question is, we don't pay to have this put in the uh, paper of record. Do we want it anywhere else locally? What we can do is write it as a press release, and we can poke it, post it in both papers. Uh, no, normally, a press release is news, and if they elect to do it, they they can if they don't that's fine um, also we haven't discussed the salary range okay. that you probably want to um, put so to back up just a second Commissioner Candace so you're okay with paying for this to make sure we get it in our that, paper uh, of record we, we absolutely need to do it okay and then if we want to send it to as a press release 
to the other papers? Yes. Okay. Press release has some value too because it shows up in an area that you know, help wanted in a help wanted section is a lousy place for a doctor to be looking to uh, look, look for a professional job. I mean, they, they, right. That's where you find uh, uh, carpenters and stuff and yeah. cars for sale. So yeah. So that's why I think it's worth paying for and it's also worth writing a press release. Right. Uh, I hope Don is listening. I, I don't mean to to pick nitpick this to death, but I have conversations with her and she said, hey, I appreciate you saying that. I never thought about that. There's something about posting a professional vacancy announcement that doesn't sit real well with me when you see it notice help wanted. I'm not belittling what Don has presented to us. I just wonder if we could change that title to Vacancy Announcement Office of Emergency Manager uh, or OEM Manager. Not many people are going to know what OEM means, but I just tell, I hate to see that as help wanted. That's right. I'm fine with it. I would rather not see OEM. I'd rather see Office of Emergency Management. I agree. Management. Yes. Because people may not know yeah. what that means. So we might make a change to that to just put the title up here. Well, here's a suggestion on that. It's it's the emergency manager of uh, operations director. You know, it's a make it what it is. It's so a, she's a manager. I yeah, think. I think or her is title manager. is thought, manager. I don't know. We kept calling. Okay, manager. She's not fine. a director. Okay. I think she's the manager, but we can clear that up with Donna Just, too. So. Yeah, according emergency to the management. according to the job description, it's emergency management director. That's what I thought. So yeah. yeah. So. Um, it's a manager pay level, but it's a, the director of that office. Yeah, and we can reach out to Meredith, too, and see what... I, I would just like to be a little more formal. That's all I'm getting at. So we got to we'll straighten I out. will talk to Miss Donna about that. Um, other than that, I certainly don't have any issue um, <clears throat> about posting it locally. I. You never know. I don't think we're going to get a ton of interest locally, but we might. Uh, last time we had one or two people. So I don't have a problem with getting it posted uh, this week if we want and then shoot a copy of this to Christy. And I, have a, I have a suggestion also on that. Um, I, I, in discussing this with, as far as the uh, director of the public health agency goes also, there are professional sites that uh, several people have brought to my attention. I, I think we could go get some information on what that might cost and bring that back to discuss, but that's a second step, I think. But we need to get it s s as widely distributed as we can. Christy assured me that she would assist us in doing that. Yeah, I think it's great. And I, I sure appreciate her help. Further discussion? Public comment. Do we need to talk about salary range before we post it? It's blank uh, in this. No, I don't think so. Typically, the sal if there's a salary range. You just got to ask yeah, Donna how she posts it, but it, it does. It is blank. Last she paragraph. left it for us to discuss. Uh, can you call Donna real quick and ask her what she recommends? And I would be a little more comfortable with the salary range versus a salary. You want to take five and we'll see yeah, comes over?
interest of discussing the OEM vacancy announcement. Uh, and so we were talking about salary range. Ms. Donna, um, are you prepared to give us some recommendations about that? And I, I really don't. Okay. Um, the reason it was where it was is because um, a state law had gone to the legislature to be passed as exempt. It had to be like 3900 a month. Well, that legislation did not pass. What was it before? Is there a li min minimum? Um, that must be because we've been posting. The minimum money. now for exempt staff is, is 36000 a year. It, may, it might be 35, 9, 18. I didn't have time by the time Kara called to look up that exact number. Not to say that's where you should put it, but that. Well, can you give us a range over what, what currently it is? Where Meredith was and up higher and lower end, you know, say exactly what it was. Uh, it's okay, it's public information. Is it public information? Could be. It uh, is. I, I posted. All the wages you can look up everyone. Um, I have to post it in the newspaper, and if there's only one of you, then everyone knows who that person is. So. Um, Do you have that figure with you? I can look it it's up. It's a little over 48. Okay, so there's a high and low. Okay. Uh, just for sake of discussion, then, do you you think 45 to 50 would be reasonable? Okay. May I make a sure. suggestion? Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Christy has been so wonderful with us. Maybe we ought to ask her what she feels for our county our size, what other counties are paying, and we can get a feel. Because I, I think we need to be competitive with other counties. I don't think we should be way high or way low. Well, that's why, we, but the range ought to cover that. Uh, that's Christy had that before, and we de dealt with it when we posted it before, so that ought to be within a range. So, you know, maybe it's not 45, 50, but maybe it's uh, 42 to 53. I mean, pick a number. Um, yeah, she's the expert. But I you see, like but it's even, even so, uh, the other counties are richer and some are poorer. So... You know, and, and if they if we hear that uh, because uh, El Paso County or Fremont County, for that matter, Fremont County's got a lot more money to deal with than we do, a lot more people. Uh, you got to be competitive within your community too. Or is it a four-day-a-week job, not five, where it'd be 32 instead of 40, which that three-day weekend the pay could be? You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to. Right. But this was the way it was posted last time. Don. Yes. Yeah, so I think it's okay. Change it, but I just was under the assumption it was going to be 40 hours a week. Yeah, if we I want to have a different conversation, that's fine. That. It actually says that right in there, right. 40 hours a week. Right. Yeah. Just if you were right. wanting a change up. I right. I think well, it's fine. Is it a 40 hour a week job? I mean, does Mary, I understand that COVID is a whole different animal, but. Dealing with COVID. Exclusive of COVID, is it a 40 hour a week job? I don't know the answer. I, that's just kind of a rhetorical question because I don't know. Me either. Yeah, I, I guess I don't have a real clear feel for that either. Uh, the chances of our Office of Emergency <laughs> Management manager being on a fire or a pandemic, can't count on that every year. Um, yeah, thank goodness. Not a thing you so, want to count on. Um, the problem with going to Christie with this it's going to hinder us trying to get this at least posted locally we're going to have to wait to post it nationally and statewide until but we, we get can, some feedback from Christie but that could happen today probably Just give a wide probably. enough range and we can deal with um, it well I didn't think we were going to put the salary in the newspaper they would go to the website to see the job description and that's where it would have the salary requirements in it is that what you anticipated right that's have we ever posted the salary in the papers is i can put it here on, on the front that says uh you know and i can't say the word that's okay commensurate, commensurate yeah there Commen you go. that's it, get it right. I commensurate I with ability yeah that's a good way to handle that's a pretty good yeah, I think so. I mean, that's pretty standard procedure is salary commensurate with uh, upon. Tom, I just looked. The, as of July 1 of this year, the minimum salary for a 
40 hour week is $684 per week or $35,568 per year. But that changes as of January 1, then it goes up. And each year it actually increases for exempt employees up to January 1 or 2025. What's it go up to? Just a few bucks? Uh, well, January 1, 2024, it goes up to 55000 per year, so that's 20000 more than it is right now. Yeah. Well, I, I would think that's on the, the, on the vacancy the announcement that we could put salary commensurate upon experience or based on experience, don't you? Yeah, I think on the announcement that's appropriate, okay. but I think if they go to the website, to learn more information, they ought to get a range. I then think Bill's fill, got a good point. Then we fill in the lines. Yeah. Yeah. Fill in the lines. Yeah. Yeah. Because I end took of it, it out. So yeah. On the back and, page. Yeah. And while I'm thinking of it, Donna, when we get ready to post this, can you change that notice from help wanted to vacancy announcement for Office of Emergency Management Director? Uh, no. So you don't want it to. Say, <coughs> you want that I just don't want to say notice help wanted. And so. But you want that Man, whole did I say director? <laughs> as the headline. Yes. Okay. So is it a director position, Donna? We're, it's director of Office of Emergency Management is what we have here. Is that the official? It's the manager. The official so it's manager. Emergency okay. Management Director. That's right off the yeah. top description. So the second line of the posting says director of the Office of Emergency Management. And that's what I took it as. But my job's director, and I'm referred to as like anything but that on mine. Yeah. So okay. would you prefer to say the manager <laughs> or director? I think director, since it matches. The director of the Office of Emergency Management. Of I like that. Clint, any input on that? I think it should be director of the Office of Emergency Management. Right. Okay. Because we have other directors, right. planning and zoning as a director. Yeah. We have a director of human resources and finance. Okay. They have to, it's always like her. Um, and so I'm going to try to call the newspaper and change the health department one because else it's going to say yeah, the old way. Public, that's right. Great. Director of yeah, public, public health. health you, do you think it said manager, Donna, for the public health? Uh, no, it's director. Okay. On there. What were you going to ask him to change? I'm sorry. At the newspaper, it says help wanted, and I oh. up that ad yesterday, and so okay. it's going to look yeah, funny we that we think OEM that. is way more yeah. important than, right. than that. So I'm going to try to get it to be more. I got you. Yeah, that'd be great if you don't mind doing that. So, uh, so really, we're looking at two different documents here, correct? This will be the vacancy announcement. This will be the job posting on the right. website. And then I even have the, the uh, application on there. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, I would move that we, under the pay schedule then, that we, the rate of pay salaried, uh, a range between forty-five and $55,000 a year. That's what he started out. That's good. <laughs> exactly. Seriously. Uh, is there a second? I'll second it. Let's move on. It's been moved. moved and seconded to include in the job description a salary range of forty-five to fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Discussion. Don, are you okay with that? Absolutely. Okay. Any other discussion, gentlemen? No, sir. Public comment. Meredith did not call in, but she sent me a text, and she said she believed it justifies 40 hours a week. Perfect. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. Uh, hearing no public comment or any further discussion, we'll proceed to vote on the motion, which is to include a salary range of forty-five dollars to $55,000 a year. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Um, and it was 55, right? Yes, right. 45 I to 55. 50, oh, I thought 45 it was 55. 55. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the chair would entertain a motion about posting the 
vacancy notice with some minor changes, right? Commensurate salary will be commensurate based on. And I'll put that when it, the close of it is. Okay. Oh, Go ahead. We already did it. We do? Yeah. yeah. To post this? Yes. Did it pass? Yes. Haven't voted on it? Got a vote. So the motion I made was totally out of order. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We got to vote on it. Wait, one more help wanted. We need a new chairman. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, by default, gentlemen, are you okay with letting the motion we just voted on stand, even though it was made out of order? Or would you like me to withdraw it? No, it's okay with me. <laughs> Let's don't start drop, over. We drop it. All right. It was an error. No so uh, that motion will stand. There's a motion on the floor then about posting the vacancy notice for the office, for the director of the Office of Emergency Management. Further discussion about posting the vacancy. Uh, we'll go into the newspaper of record. Uh, we will pay them to have that posted, Ms. Donna. And then there was a request to put it in the other papers as a press That's release. Perfect. And I, how do I do a press release? I, I would guess just send them and ask them if they oh. would. I can handle that for you. Because last time I sent them a carbon copy of it and they asked, they said um, it will be $44. So right. I, I would just write press, press release only. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll They'll handle it. Got a special relationship. Well, we're paying to have it in the Tribune. It can be a press release in the Tribune, too, which makes it more visible if they elect to do it. And the health department as well? Yeah. Since we're on the second one? I mean. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. Well, it, it, with due respect, the paper has a right to a publish a press release or not. They are obligated if we give them a want to add that we pay for to Correct. publish that. So as long as they agree to publish a press release, I'm fine. But I'm concerned that if we say here's a press release and they choose not to publish it, we, right. we it. have That's to tell I'm them both. About. I agree. Absolutely. Well, I agree with what you're saying. We're going to pay to put this in the paper record. What happens after that, we don't have any control over unless we're willing to pay I for it. I fully support okay. that yeah. comment. All right. Okay. Uh, so the motion was to publish it in the paper of record and to send it as a press release to the other two newspapers. I'm what they do with it is their choice. Let's vote. Okay. Uh, public comment? Hearing there, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of posting the vacancy notice for OEM say aye 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 motion carries when I say posting obviously I meant posting in the paper of record okay and you said I can get this in for the ninth which is like in a minute okay and so should I run it two weeks three weeks still have it closed the 27th I would say two weeks myself but open for debate I just don't think we're going to get a ton of we gotta get a ton of response locally. Yeah, That's I think two weeks is fine, and we can always reconsider that if we need to. Okay. Yeah. You good there, Miss Donna? I'm just trying to figure out when payroll's there. That if they're turning them in, um, I, I just won't be able to deal with them because I'll, I'll cut it at the 22nd then. Okay. And obviously, the Board of County Commissioners has the right to refuse any or all applicants, right? Always. I mean, that goes, yeah, right. should go without saying. Okay, very good. Anything else uh, pertaining to the OEM uh, vacancy announcement? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you coming over. Thanks, Tata. I'll stop over in a minute. Do you have this electronically? Uh, I'm sorry, it's the vacancy, okay, uh, or you can scan this, either one, we do need to send a copy of this to Christy Coleman, ask her for her input. She'll have the With the change that we made. Yeah. If you can even handle it. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be today, but uh, we just don't want to forget, because I told her we'd get her a copy of it. That's why she's the admin assistant. That's right. She has the Perfect. Oh, she's hired to her memory. Well, at her it's age, her her at her age, I'm worried about her memory starting to fail, as yeah, mine has. 
year older. <laughs> I mean, she's five years younger than I am, so it will catch up with her. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not going there. I'll probably have to invite her to lunch. Um, and, and to that vein, then, uh, do we want to just have Christy and Meredith provide us with a list of who we th who they think we should send this to as well or should we just ask Christy to deal with it? I think Christy to help work with it so we can get it posted where she says. So we can have her talk with Donna. I think we ought to let Christy just come back to us and yeah. say here's what I recommend. I Potentially she could say I'll send it out on our listserv or whatever method she has. Or she may say to us, you should do the following. I say let's just okay. leave it to her. She's the professional. Analyst. And I agree with what Commissioner Kanda said. I'm fine with turning that over via Christy to just communicate with Donna. I don't think I need to know no, where it's going. Absolutely agree with okay. that. Okay. All right. So I will uh, follow up with that as well. So, uh, Kara, would you just make a note and ask Christy to communicate with Donna and Meredith and we'll get it rocking and rolling. Okay. Um, the other thing that Christy asked of me last night to bring to the meeting today was to express her desire to serve on the hiring committee for this position. She is willing to do that as a voting member or as a uh, non-voting member, either one. Well, I think well, I she do. could if we appoint her as no. one, but it uh, would be up to us, wouldn't it? Yeah, I oh, think it's well. our, yeah. We got to decide who is on a committee and the committee votes. That's true, but we, that, up to the mechanics here, we're, we were elected to be representative. We have the authority and the responsibility to delegate some of the responsibility uh, or the re authority for her to do that, but then that takes it out of the, the realm of what the, they are elect why we're elected. We can have her as an advisor anytime and give us input. And that's what we've done in the past on a couple other uh, hirings that we've had. We didn't appoint them as a voting member, but we, we got their input. It was one with uh, John uh, Carroll. For, you have to be careful. Delegate your, your responsibility. I'll go either way. I, I, I personally, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't have a problem because we're going to listen to her input and we right. make decisions based on, Hang on, on a second. data. I, I'm, I'm saying I, I, I fully comprehend what you're saying. You know, I personally feel, I'm not trying to contradict you, but I personally feel we have the authority to say you're a voting member of our committee. However, you know, she's going to be a, a major influence on me because she's the expert. Well, that's okay. Right. But yeah, I paid to make the decision. She's not. Right. Yeah, I appreciate Commissioner Candace's perspective, and and maybe it should come down to the, to the vote of the commissioners without any outside voting. Certainly, sure influence, uh, and that's fine. She's fine with it either way, and so her her desire was to be part of the process. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I think that's great. To make sure. We were asking the right questions and so on and so forth. So I know she would be great for that. So I'll reach out to her and let her know that we would invite her to be on that <coughs> uh, committee as a non-voting member unless you want to take that to a vote. Okay, very good. Uh, any additional items to come before the board? Yes, sir. Commissioner Prince. Mr. Chairman, you kind of alluded to this very early in the meeting this morning. Um, I, I think the microphone system we have right now is not functioning well enough for what we do. Um, I've noticed as we all speak, these microphones click in and out, and I'm real concerned that we're not able to get the public involved the way we really need to have them involved. I'm sorry they miss things, not on purpose, but it's electronic issues. I recommend that we ask Vern to go back to the drawing board and come up with a better solution than we have right now. Well, let me comment too, uh, then we can decide. Go ahead. Um, my professional experience, b both in the military and in the corporations I've worked with and for, 
there are phone systems, polycoms they call them, that are very sensitive around in a conference room. And people that dial in, hundreds of people can hear, and they, uh, they transmit very well. The reason we got these, and that's something we can have him look at. The other reason we got these phone, these mics in the first place was people in our room were having problems hearing us in the back of this room. So maybe there's some microphone system that w works good in an auditorium uh, you know, or whatever we, we get that is also compatible with a polycom. And then that's what we need to get Vern to, to And I'm, I'm great with whatever solution is going to solve this problem. If it's polycom or something else, I, I just feel we owe it to the public that we need to upgrade this right. system. This system, you're specifically talking about the microphones right now, correct? I'm talking about the microphones <laughs> yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it's scabbed into this but thing, it, which is... Right. If Bill's solution will help the phone issue, because we stick one of these crummy microphones in front of the speaker on our phone, if there's a better solution there, too, let's fix this. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, personally, I prefer a lapel mic for us, but... Yeah, I will bring that up with Vernon, and and I don't have a problem if we need to spend some more money on it. Obviously, I wrote a grant for this; it got denied, so we paid for it out of our budget. But what I don't have a problem. Anybody, three thousand yeah, and three. some dollars. So, uh, but I wouldn't. I would support spending more money if we need to. And it ought I to be able to it. probably can work with some of this equipment we got on there. So who knows? It might. Just yes. To look at it. I think that was an eight-channel uh, processor back there. So may not have to replace that. That sounds great. Definitely, Thank I you. think we Thank need to do something that. about these microphones, you bet. Yes, ma'am. Um, with the, the people on the phone, we bought a conference call phone. So yeah, where is where it? Is it? And yeah, I remember that now that you bring it up. It's a good point. Uh, yeah, it ought to be a polycom, mm -hmm. probably. We used to yeah, do I don't a more. I don't know what Polycom is, but we did buy a comp calling. It's like a satellite. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was a little thing. bigger, and it yeah, yeah. seemed to help. Just uh, a suggestion. You know what? I'll bet money it's locked in. Where was that? Where'd that white cabinet go that was back here? That, Speaking of, and it may be outdated, so but we can take have him take a look at. Yeah, this. we bought it less than a year ago. Was it a year ago, yeah, well, yeah it's not outdated yet. Let's get it. And we used it down in Wetmore. Yes, so we it did. could be in Wetmore. Right. We may have left that's it there, because right. that's where we yeah. felt we were going to need it. It's in the base of that white cabinet back there. I, I, I'll bet it's in Wetmore. No. But that's that's just half of the problem. Right, exactly. Yeah. I, uh, even if we weren't teleconferencing and these mics keep cutting out, as Commissioner Candy indicated, there might be people in the back of this room couldn't hear us or in the courthouse where we were at. So uh, by consent, I will move forward with Vernon and we'll deal with it. We've never been pleased with these microphones since the day we got them. They started doing this the first day we had them. So I don't know. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll get some traction for that. Thank you for bringing that up. Other additional items of business? Not for me, sir. Commissioner, yes. Commissioner Kennedy. None here. Clerk to the board. Jackie brought me this um, thing you guys have to sign for the sons. Do you want to sign it now or in a meeting or do you Yeah, just how many signatures? All three? Yeah. Let's do it now. We already voted to approve it and sign it. That was the motion. So we might as well do that today while we're here. <coughs> while we're doing that, Chair would open uh, the floor to public comment if anyone is on the phone and wants to uh, comment to the commissioners. Now would be the appropriate time. Yeah, we're just signing the conditions. And maybe that's all that gets signed. That's not the entire special use permit, it's just the conditions. Yeah, they handle the permit. 
Okay, if there's no public comment, uh, I don't believe, yes, I don't believe we have an executive session scheduled. Chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I'll second it. We move and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. This meeting has been adjourned. Thank you, Vern.